Okay, we're going to take a look at the law of sines, um, specifically the ambiguous case or the side-side angle case. And my name is Jody DeVoe. Okay, so let's take a look here. Um, the problem we're going to look at is A equals 7, B equals 1, and angle A equals 108 degrees. Okay, so make sure your calculator is in degree mode. Um, all of these problems and the triangle cases, the law of sines cases, they're all going to be in, in angle mode. So I'm just going to draw myself um, a picture. Um, it doesn't have to be a great picture. I'm just going to kind of try to help me see what's opposite of what. Um, may be accurate or not. Um, so I have 108 degrees. That's alpha, so side A has to go opposite that, so that's 7. And then I'm going to pick this side over here to be B equals 1. That means that this angle here is beta, and this last angle up here then has to be gamma. Okay, and I, I guess just for the record, let's clear this whole uh, Greek letter thing up here. This symbol is alpha. That one's pretty obvious, that's beta. And this one is gamma. Okay, now we're giving, given the ambiguous case here. Um, what tells me that it's the ambiguous case is that I'm given uh, only one angle and two sides. One angle and two sides. Um, and we'll see why this is called the ambiguous case here in a second, what, what happens. Now let me say this too before I get um, started here is that one way to go about doing this to determine whether you have one triangle, no triangles, or two triangles is to memorize a whole mess of things. Um, a table uh, and a test to see about H and then you never use H again. Anyway, the way that I'm going to show you here is not to memorize anything. Now if you're into memorization, go for it. Um, you'll have to hit a different pen cast though because this is not going to do it for you. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to solve the triangle um, for the angles and the sides and, and then I'm just going to check at, a, at the, the end here to see whether another triangle is possible or not. Um, and I'll show you what I mean when I get there. The thing to, to realize though I guess here is what makes this the ambiguous case. When do I know that I have to at least check to make sure that I might not have a second triangle possible? And what causes this is that I'm not given two angles, I'm only given one angle. The fact that I'm only given one angle is the thing that makes me say I have to check. Check for two triangles. Is that possible? Okay, so um, I'm going to go ahead and solve. I'm not going to do any testing ahead of time, I'm just going to go and solve it. So I'm going to say sine of 108 degrees, the side opposite that goes on the bottom. And then I'm going to solve for the angle beta. Have to solve for beta next. Can't solve for gamma because I don't know the angle or the side that goes with that. So sine beta and, and then b equals 1 goes on the bottom there. So when I solve for sine beta here, I get uh, 7 sine beta equals the sine of 108 degrees. And so I get the sine of beta equals sine 108 divided by 7. Or the sine of beta. Sine of 108 degrees divided by 7 is 0.14. Okay? Now, I need to solve for beta here. And the fact that I have to use the inverse sine button, inverse sine button, um, that's what the problem is. That's that's what's really kind of causing the whole issue here of do I have one triangle, no triangles, or two triangles. Um, <clears throat> so because I have to hit the inverse sine button on the calculator, recall that there are more than one one place, there's more than one place where the sine of beta is equal to 0.14. There's actually an infinite number, an infinite number of places where the sine of beta is equal to 0.14. Um, let me just kind of draw you a little picture here to remind you of that. You're trying to, in solving this sine beta equals 0.14, you really kind of should have this picture in your mind of what you're solving. Here's 0.14. 
y equals 0.14. And that's what you're solving. When you hit that inverse uh, sign button on your calculator, you're trying to figure out what is that theta right there that makes the y value equal to 0.14. And that comes out of the calculator, um, that first one, but there's also an infinite number more than that. Um, so when I hit the inverse sign button on the calculator, I get one solution, and that one solution comes out to be 8 degrees. But there's actually, as I said, an infinite number. We're not going to concern ourselves with all the rest of them. We're just going to look at the next one. Okay, that's the one we're going to concern ourselves with. So there's actually kind of two possible solutions here. Um, beta could be equal to 8 degrees, or beta might also equal um, 180 degrees, and it's always 180 degrees, minus 8 degrees. Or in our case, beta might also be equal to 172 degrees. Now, I say might because we have to look a little bit further to see if I can actually form a second triangle um, with this 172 degree op option. So I don't know if that's really going to be possible yet or not. Um, I know that 8 degrees is possible. I just don't know for sure if this second option, this 172, again, that comes from the second solution right here, um, is that also going to be a possibility for, for forming a second triangle? Okay, so um, let's see what gamma then would be in these two cases. So if beta is the 8 degree option, um, then I have alpha equals 108 degrees, that was given, the beta that I calculated at 8 degrees, and then what is gamma left over to be? Well, in order to get gamma, I'm going to add alpha and beta together. Remember that the sum has to be 180 degrees for the inside of a triangle. So a sum of 180 degrees, alpha and beta add up to 116 degrees, which means that gamma would have to be what's left over out to get to the 180 degrees is 64 degrees. Okay, so that's one possibility. Um, alpha equals 108, beta equals 8, gamma equals 64. And then I could go ahead and solve for the one last missing piece here, the side C. So I'm going to just put that in here, then solve for side C. But is there a second triangle? Is a second triangle possible? Well, let's look. Um, the other option was that beta could be 172 degrees. So if that's the case, then I'd have, again, alpha is 108, that's given, that can't change. Beta is 172 degrees, that was that second option of all of the infinite options uh, that I get when I hit that inverse sign button. Um, and again, the 172 always comes from 180 degrees minus the angle you get from your calculator. Always. 180 minus the angle you get from the calculator. So I'm now checking, is there room, if that's the case, if alpha is 108 and beta is 172, is there room for gamma? For gamma? Can I form a triangle? And I think you can pretty clearly see here that when I add alpha and beta together this time, um, I get an angle that's bigger than 180 degrees. I get, let's see, 10, um, 280 degrees, I think, okay, which is already greater than 180 degrees, so there's no room to form a triangle there. I'm already over the limit of 180 degrees. So there is no second triangle possible because there's no way to form a triangle that has 108, 172, there's no room left. So no room left for gamma. No room left. We're already out of, of degree measure there. You're over the limit of 180 degrees. So no second triangle. So I didn't test anything, I didn't memorize anything, I just tried it. If it happened that there was room for that, that third angle gamma there, after adding the alpha and beta together, then I would go ahead and solve that second triangle. But there doesn't appear to be room for that gamma to get the 180 degrees, so I'm done. There's one triangle. Um, you still have to solve for side C. Um, 
but uh, we only have that one triangle possible. Okay, let's pause. Okay, I think actually we're going to stop here and uh, we'll go to the next case of two triangles.